inaccessible to the rest of the world for so long. Now, open borders spill its secrets. In its heart lies a place of surprises. Siberia. Not only a frozen wilderness, it is a region of incredible diversity. Of precarious beauty and endangered animals. Where wildlife and wild lands amaze. This is Siberia. At 70 times the size of the United Kingdom, but with just over twice the population, Russia remains one of the world's great wildernesses. It sprawls across 10,000 kilometers, reaching nearly halfway around the world. Covering almost 10% of the planet's land mass is Siberia. Synonymous with punishing cold, parts of it can bake at 40 degrees Celsius. But think Siberia, think snow. Winter lives up to its reputation. From November to February, 100% of Siberia is snow covered, sometimes 80 centimeters deep. But Siberia doesn't close for the season. Its residents just find it a little tougher to get things done. As ravens greet the morning, Warmly insulated Eurasian wolves shrug off the cold. These social animals live and hunt in packs, sometimes as small as a pair, or in prosperous times, as large as three dozen. A good-sized wolf pack can lord over a territory as large as 13,000 square kilometers. That's five times the size of Paris. They disturb a falcon, which in turn disturbs the ravens. Apparently, Siberia's 13 million square kilometers still isn't enough space. Howling, the wolf call to arms, gathers the pack and warns other wolves to back off. The chorus can carry for 10 kilometers. A strong sense of smell helps locate carrion or live prey. Each animal could eat up to nine kilos of meat and travel up to 200 kilometers a day. With the lake frozen solid, they eat the ice to quench their thirst. In the north of Siberia lies Yakutia, idyllic and picturesque. And also the coldest spot in the northern hemisphere. Temperatures here can plunge to minus 70 degrees Celsius. Yakut horses face it head on. To help survive the harshest of winters, they keep movement to a minimum. Heavy hooves scratch away deep snow to uncover frozen grass. And now in March, many are eating for two, preparing to foal in May or June when the weather finally breaks. One dominant male mates with several females. Over the millennia, they've developed thick skin and dense fur to shield them from the cold.
fat laid down last summer provides energy during the meager winter months, but not all will make it. Further north, another cold weather survivor truly clings to life. One of the rarest birds in the world, the critically endangered Siberian white crane. About three and a half thousand remain worldwide and only four birds in Western Siberia. Breeding pairs are precious. After spending the worst of winter in China, they travel almost 5,000 kilometers to breed in the isolated wilderness of the Russian tundra. With so few birds, their monogamy works against them, making breeding partners tough to find. But when they connect, both parents raise their young. The female lays two eggs, though generally only one chick will live. As their winter sights shrink, so does their chance for survival. Elsewhere, secretive animals lurk in forested shadows. With a face like a kangaroo and a vampire's teeth, the musk deer makes his timid way through the woods in search of lichens. Don't be fooled by the fangs. Males grow them for display instead of antlers. The older the deer, the longer the fangs. But it's the other end of the deer that attracts more attention. The male's musk gland produces a scent that's irresistible to does and perfume makers. Even though the deer have a poor sense of smell, the musk manages to attract mates. Unfortunately, the human trade in musk glands has reduced the deer's numbers dramatically. And because only two-thirds of the females have fawns each year, the population replenishes slowly. After feeding, they chew the cud, regurgitating their meal and chewing it again to help digest it. Though relaxed, he keeps alert. In a nearby clearing, ravens benefit from the death of one of the pregnant horses. Their sharp beaks can strip clean the picked over carcass. The group name for ravens is an unkindness, and they are both fierce and intelligent. They can make over 30 different kinds of sounds. But howling wolves frighten even them. Wolves don't hibernate, so they're constantly on the prowl for food. In autumn and winter, packs become nomadic, moving from place to place in search of a meal. Guided by their sharp sense of smell, they'll hunt, steal or scavenge, whatever it takes to fill their bellies. Hungry wolves attack the meat with such ferocity that they even intimidate each other. For the birds, it's time for some fun. 
Like mammals, birds love to play, and the ravens are some of the silliest. They can afford to. Adult ravens seem to lack natural enemies. Time for a quick brush down, and they're all done. Well, almost. Before man took his first step, ancient killers roamed the earth. Unchallenged, they feared nothing until Mother Nature intervened. The northern coniferous forest zone, called the taiga, caps off Siberia. The largest forest in the world stretches seven million square kilometers. The northeastern section, Yakutia, the land of the horse people, brushes up against the Arctic Circle. And though Yakut horses do roam here, they don't roam alone. Through the hills of Yakutia comes a relentless army. Reindeer. A herd of a thousand strong. Built for cold weather, reindeer, or caribou, have hollow, tapered hair that traps heat next to their bodies. They haven't come here by chance. It's an annual roundup. Yakut are an ancient people, thought to have migrated north to Yakutia around 700 years ago. And while most have become urbanized, 400,000 still live as traditional nomadic herders. The herdsmen must get the animals to new grazing before the snow melts and they are trapped by waterlogged land. They need to grow fat in the warm weather if they are to endure the winter freeze. The elder of the tribe feeds them salt, a rare delicacy that makes him very popular. But walking in a forest of reindeer antlers is a dangerous business. As soon as they secure the reindeer, it's time to celebrate by eating one, starting with the tongue. Like cattle in other parts of the world, reindeer form the lifeline of these Yakut people. Everyone depends on them. The animals provide food, clothing, leather, and more. Left on their own, reindeer can wander farther than any other terrestrial mammal about 5,000 kilometers a year and reach speeds of up to 80 kilometers per hour. In the summer, they can form herds in the tens of thousands. 
but for the Yakuts, this little herd will do just fine. In spring, as the weather finally warms, the rivers begin to unlock. Broken ice makes handy barges for lazy waterfowl. But the gaps in the ice also give golden-eyed ducks a chance to fish. Soon, they're out in force. They're not the only ones braving the cold waters. Dippers live up to their names, bobbing for small bugs and crustaceans. As parts of the river thaw, the birds flock to the grand openings. Treating ice unleashes a remarkably hardy amphibian. The Siberian salamander. Compounds in their blood enable these newts to survive temperatures of minus 40 degrees Celsius. They can stay frozen solid for years before thawing and reviving as good as new. They then head for the cold water where they will mate and lay eggs before freezing again next season. The Siberian salamander is one of only a few species on the planet that can survive the deep freeze like this. Moving 1,500 kilometers to Siberia's southern steppes, the landscape dramatically changes. Pine forests give way to what look like African plains. Here, wild horses run free. They share the land with small groups of camels and the strange goitered gazelle. These nomadic gazelles once roamed across Central Asia by the tens of thousands. But hunting and habitat loss have taken their toll. They meander across the plains eating grasses and shrubs. In the autumn rut, the male's throats swell up, giving them their name. A threatened gazelle can dart from its enemies at 60 kilometers per hour. They slip like a breeze through the Mongolian border fence. Heading southwest along the 3,400-kilometer Mongolian border, the terrain turns mountainous. 
the Altai Mountains stretch four and a half thousand meters into the sky and are over twice as long as the European Alps. In this arid, harsh and windswept environment, the world's largest sheep make their home. The Argali, weighing in at about 160 kilos, prized by hunters for their size. A male with his harem seems at peace. But even without hunters, the life of an alpha male is tense. A challenger comes. It takes over three years for a young male to grow the impressive adult horns, which can spiral to 190 centimeters long and weigh up to 20 kilos. The group of females attracts attention from would-be suitors. The alpha male is clearly unimpressed. The youngster will see what it means to be a top male. Challenger pulls his punches, just testing the dominant male's resolve. The top male lords over a harem of up to 25 females, while young upstarts wait on the sidelines. This ram senses the chance to mate. Lip curling, called the flamen response, allows him to taste the air for pheromones indicating a willing female. She's out here, but which one? He tries his sexiest moves, but the girls aren't in the mood. Finally, he gets his fleeting reward. No matter, he'll mate with many females during the season. But he's not the only one who knows a good thing when he smells it. More suitors arrive. They try to sneak in while the alpha male is distracted. but he soon wises up. The thick neck absorbs the blows. The delicate brain is cushioned beneath the core of the hollow horns. He defends his claim and relocates his harem. One challenger won't give up so easily. They can crash at nearly 100 kilometers per hour. Eventually, a final blow signals the end. When spring comes to Siberia, the floodgates open. Over millennia, racing waters have cut swathes through hard rock and pine forests. In southeast Siberia, much of it runs to the seventh largest freshwater lake in the world. 636 kilometers long and 80 kilometers at its widest. This is Lake Baikal.
this record-breaking lake holds 20% of the Earth's fresh water. As much as all five of America's great lakes combined. But with the water temperature rarely rising above 8 degrees Celsius, it's not as inviting as it looks. But that's okay for the residents, the only freshwater seals in the world. The Baikal seals. No one knows how they got to the enclosed lake. One theory is that they evolved from ringed seals half a million years ago when the Arctic Ocean extended further into Siberia. Thousands of years of isolation turned them into a separate species. In the middle of the lake are the Ushkani Islands. Here the seals form their colonies safe from human predation. After a dip in the lake, nothing beats a dry resting place on the lakeside rocks. Getting onto them is by no means easy using flippers. But underwater, they are hydrodynamic torpedoes, zipping along at up to 25 kilometers per hour. The oldest and deepest lake in the world, over one and a half kilometers, originated more than 20 million years ago when two tectonic plates drifted apart. They're still separating at about six millimeters a year. Down here, the Baikalian sponge colony resembles a coral reef. It can even survive under complete ice cover. 60% of the creatures found here are unique to the lake. While some animals are tiny, the oxygen-rich water enables extreme growth in others. Some amphipods in Lake Baikal can reach 90 millimeters. Deep in the lake, life and death quietly play out. Snails clean up a rotting fish. Others are busy mating in the cold waters. Fifty stories up on the surface, Baikal prepares for an invasion. Cadiz flies. After spending a year or so as larvae underwater, they transform into winged adults and take to the skies. The millions of tiny flies attract far bigger animals. As they hold a mass mating orgy along the banks of the lake, brown bears come to feed on this fleeting feast of protein. The flies may only live for a week, so must rush to lay eggs on the water before dying. And for ten days or so, bears search them out, dead or alive. They can eat up to 40 kilos of food a day, and flies make a pleasant addition to their mainly vegetarian diet. Many are attracted by this short-lived feast. But even with this abundance, a smaller bear must defer to a bigger one. Mm. 
while animal life flourishes in the woods around Baikal Lake, a different population of creatures thrives in the middle. Just one and a half kilometers from the nearest shore lies the island of Olkan. This is the largest of Baikal's 25 islands, about the same size as Dubai. Snakes have managed to cross the water to populate Olkan Island. This one, a Dione's rat snake, isn't venomous. But they keep the rodent population in check. Away from the rocks and into the grasslands, a family of ground squirrels keep a watchful eye. At just three weeks old, four siblings have started to explore the world beyond their burrow. Like meerkats in Africa, vigilance is key. They stay alert, even when they're feeding. When they're not nibbling grass, the ground squirrels nibble at each other. Grooming is a big part of their lives, because if the snakes don't get them, the insects will. Close inspection shows their fur harbors a miniature universe of mites and bugs. Perhaps not so cute after all. The ground squirrels aren't the only ones on Olcon with problems. Around 100,000 Baikal seals live on the lake, which may soon be an unsustainable figure. Hundreds crowd onto rocks around the island. They shiver involuntarily to keep warm and seek rocks for sunbathing. But space is tight. The lucky ones squeeze in, though that doesn't necessarily guarantee a warm reception. frustration of one soon spreads. With few natural enemies, the seals apparently like to pick on each other. on a hot rock beats being on the outside trying to get in. This exclusive resort isn't accepting new guests. Come evening, a cool mist hangs over the lake as the last of the egg-laying caddis flies get picked off by ducks and bears. Brown bears are crepuscular, preferring to venture out at dawn or dusk. They have a fantastic sense of smell and can track the scent of a carcass for over three kilometers. 
but they are not alone in that respect. Two predators are after the same prize. But there's no way a 50 kilogram wolf will challenge a 500 kilogram bear. Getting in first, the weaker wolf steals what it can, a large leg bone. stopping to watch its back is a mistake. <laughs> Thankfully, the bear's appetite takes it to the bigger prize. Tonight, they both get a share of the spoils. Late August, and as summer slides into autumn, the land around Baikal begins its transformation. Soft and rotting wood sprouts fast-growing fungus. The damp underbelly of the forest comes alive. Cowberries and blueberries fatten up, and it's harvest time. Though chipmunks live on the ground, they depend on the Siberian pines. While one stuffs his cheek pouches, another waits his chance. cutthroat world of pine nut gathering, its winner takes all. Before the snow falls, the chipmunks must collect enough seeds and nuts to last the long winter. Each will amass about four kilos of food in its den, carried there cheek load by cheek load. It takes a lot of effort, especially with competitors watching every move. Chipmunks aren't the top collectors of the forests. That prize probably belongs to the colonies of red ants. Worldwide, ants are so numerous, their total weight is almost as much as the human population. A force to reckon with. Workers form a never-ending conveyor belt of food salvage. This ladybird is just one of about 60,000 creatures captured and carried into a single anthill each day. When ants go on the march, other insects flee. But the slippery bark of this birch proves this long-horned beetle's undoing. The mob rushes in to overpower it, dousing it with formic acid which penetrates the bug's armour.
Then the ants dismember the giant and carry it back to the nest, piece by piece. As winter returns in November, distant peaks regain their snowy cover. It will soon spread. Three thousand five hundred meters up in the Cyan Mountains near the Russian Mongolian border, Siberian ibex search for food. They scratch a living from the meager grasses on the sunnier south facing slopes. But some have a different sort of appetite. A big male checks out his group of females. For an ibex, foreplay means about 30 minutes of hitting, screaming and urinating. While the alpha male's back is turned, a young pretender tries to muscle in on the action. But his clumsy advance alerts the boss. Time to move on. At high altitudes, the temperature is always punishing. But now, all across Siberia, the big freeze returns. In some places, dropping to minus 60 degrees Celsius. The waters of Baikal slowly glaze over and will soon form an ice blanket nearly a meter thick. Snow reclaims the mountains and the sweeping forests. But for some, the fun's just starting. Wild boar. These coarse-haired beasts have no complaints about the cold. They grow thicker winter fur to cope with the snow. disk of cartilage turns their snout into a digging tool. They can easily plough through snow and ice to sniff out their supper. They have an omnivorous diet. If they can find it, they'll eat it. This inadvertently helps the ecosystem by dispersing seeds around their habitat. Even the youngest piglets enjoy a romp, although they are very sensitive to cold. Eventually, they'll have the benefit of the adult's bushy coat. While this heavy sleeper naps, the youngsters test their metal, preparing for their eventual shot at the big time. They won't be strong enough to challenge for females until they are five years old. Until that day, they will regularly hone their sparring skills. They will stay with the group until they mature. During the long winter chill, Lake Baikal transforms from a flat expanse into cut crystal. Movement across its huge surface ruptures and shifts the ice layers.
adult seals spend the winter alone, mostly in the water. But come April, they'll have some company. This pup is the first of the season to emerge. Weaning for Baikal seals is abrupt. The mother starves herself during the eight weeks of feeding the pup in a snow den. Then she simply abandons it on the surface. Soon, the ice scape will be dotted with other emerging pups. Already, this one is eager to explore its world. A layer of fat keeps it warm above and below the waterline, where icy caverns create a frozen paradise. But Siberia's chilling reputation tells only half the story. With beauty as expansive as its borders and a diversity to rival any place on Earth, this Russian land of mountains and lakes, forests and plains can only be described in a single surprising word. Siberia.